All right, so today I want to show you two genes in ball pythons that when you combine them together, you make some really visually stunning combinations. And that is when you mix the leopard with the spot nose. And it's kind of amazing. There's no like a, a common name for this combination like you have like a lemon blast is a pastel pinstripe. As far as I know, there's really no slang for the leopard spot nose. And when you mix it together, essentially what you get is you get a really jumbled up pattern that has a lot of really high contrast. And when you mix other genes in, to the mix you can make some really incredible combos a lot of times what it does is it keeps the original color of the gene or the combination it really jumbles up the pattern and adds a lot of contrast to the mix makes for probably the most visually impressive combinations that i've ever seen so today i want to jump over to the internet and i want to show you the potential when mixing the leopard with the spot nose all right so i want to jump over here at morphmarket.com and i want to start with the leopard ball python this is what the leopard looks like and as a matter of fact the leopard just by itself is pretty powerful it's i'd consider it the king of co-dominant genes it's pretty amazing if you mix leopard with something else it'll mix up the pattern but let me tell you it's nothing like mixing leopard with the spot nose <laughs> that's really crazy so the leopard is it's i i kind of consider it like a pseudo dark morph if you mix it with dark genes a lot of times it'll really darken the darks almost to a jet black and if you mix it with something like a coral glow that's light to begin with a lot of times it really doesn't darken it at all and a lot of people are kind of interested in the prices of a lot of these combinations as a matter of fact if you take a leopard and a spot nose mix them together and you start adding other genes into the mix i've seen some of these combinations sell for over a thousand dollars a piece but here is a really inexpensive way to jump into the project you can actually pick up just a standalone leopard take a look at this one this is 75 dollars really inexpensive to pick up a leopard so here is the other key ingredient in this combination and that is the spot nose and at first glance when you're looking at the spot nose you're probably thinking hey that looks kind of like a normal ball python just like the normal wild type classic and kind of the difference the key to picking out a spot nose is this pattern on the head you see really interesting head stamps on a lot of spot noses and spot nose combinations and if you're thinking about picking up a spot nose here is the price on the spot nose this one is $45 so you could probably pick them up for almost nothing between two of them so if you take a spot nose and you breed it to a leopard this is what you get you get a spot nose leopard and take a look at this crazy snake it's, it's funny I was looking over here at Morph Market and I kept running across these snakes I was like that is the most impressive snake that I've seen what are the genes in that combination and every time I run into something really crazy like this it always has the spot nose nose and the leopard in the mix pretty crazy and a lot of times people are shooting for the spot nose leopard clown which is a really popular combination and this this is kind of interesting because you see a lot of jumbled up pattern a lot of really high contrast and in this case you see a lot of darks from the leopard really darkening the the dark the parts of the snake and then you see this really crazy head stamp from the spot nose makes for a really amazing combination so I wanted to add some other genes into the leopard spot nose to show you kind of the potential of what it can do. It's pretty amazing when you start working other genes into it. And I want to start with just the pastel. And the pastel is a yellow snake. A lot of times it can be really bright yellow. Sometimes it can be kind of browned out. And a lot of, a lot of pastels really have a reduced pattern. But you can see in this example, it almost keeps the alien heads that, like you'd see on a normal ball python. They can be pretty variable. So here's what happens if you mix pastel in with the leopard spot nose take a look at this this is a crazy combination that's what it does is it brings out a little bit more yellow but the addition of the pastel really jumbles up the pattern even more because pastel by itself is a pattern mutation gene you can really jumble up the pattern makes for some really amazing combinations as a matter of fact if you added two copies of pastel i actually pulled up a picture here this is the super pastel spot nose leopard take a look at this crazy snake and it seems like you can't go wrong mixing spot nose and leopard in with just about any gene or any combination it's pretty impressive 
So here is the pinstripe ball python. The pinstripe is one of my favorite genes. Just as a standalone gene, it's probably the brightest gold gene that you can get. And if you actually breed a pinstripe to something else, half the offspring come out as pinstripe. It's a dominant mutation. And here's what happens if you mix pinstripe in with the spot nose leopard. You get the spot nose leopard pinstripe. And the cool thing about this is it really kind of reduces the pattern, it takes away most of the pinstripe pattern, and really keeps a lot of the gold color from the pinstripe. Makes for a really impressive combination. So here is the cinnamon. The cinnamon is another dark gene. As a matter of fact, if you take two cinnamons and breed them together, you get almost a completely black, patternless snake. Pretty awesome morph. If you take cinnamon and breed it into the spot nose leopard, this is what you get. Take a look at this. This is crazy. Probably one of the best cinnamon combos that I've ever seen. It's really jumbled up as far as the pattern. Really keeps a lot of the really dark black in it and really has a high contrast between the darks and the lights makes for a really impressive combination. So here is the banana. The banana is a really light gene. A lot of times if you mix, you know, like leopard into the banana, a lot of times the banana won't darken because the leopard, you know, being kind of a pseudo dark morph, doesn't really darken the banana in a lot of cases. And here's what happens if you mix banana in with the spot nose leopard. Take a look at this snake. This is really crazy. Probably one of the craziest banana combos that I've ever seen. I really love the head stamps on all these combinations. You get a really jumbled up pattern you can see it really keeps the high contrast and it's, it's a lot of times it's difficult to get things to break through the banana because the banana is so visually dominant it's probably one of the best combinations that i've seen over here on morph as a matter of fact i was wondering what the price was on this one this one is 550 dollars so a lot of these combinations, is, it's kind of interesting because the single genes you can pick up relatively inexpensive and then when you put them together and make these really crazy combinations that seems like they sell for quite a bit of money. I just, I think it's the visual appeal of the combination that really sells it. It's, there's probably a lot more demand than there is a supply for a lot of these combinations. So here is the albino. When it comes to the albino, I'd say the albino is probably the most visually dominant morph out there. You breed albino to anything else, a lot of times you end up with an albino looking snake because the albino just really dominates pretty much any other gene. And here's what happens when you work albino into the leopard spot nose. Take a look at this crazy combination. This is probably one of the best albino combinations that I've seen because it's really keeping a lot of the high contrast and really just jumbling up the pattern pretty amazing and this one's a little bit harder to hit because the albino is a recessive mutation so if you look at the genetics on this one this is the leopard the spot nose and two copies of the albino and take a look at the price on this one this one's selling for nine hundred dollars this is pretty amazing pretty awesome project to get into if you're looking to get in kind of at a low end and make some really high-end snakes with this combination it's pretty awesome so here is the Anchi, and when it comes to Anchi, it's, it's essentially a pattern reduction gene. A lot of times it'll reduce the alien heads on the sides that you'd see on a normal ball python, and sometimes it'll reduce it a little bit, and sometimes it'll bring it almost into tiger stripes, depending on the version of the Anchi. And a lot of times uh, the Anchi will bring in a lot of orange, kind of a yellowish orange into a lot of combos. And here's what happens if you work Anchi into the leopard spot nose. Take a look at this crazy snake that is pretty impressive look at the head stamp on this one probably the best pattern on the head that i've ever seen almost looks like a little clover or something on the head pretty impressive and as a matter of fact this one is 66 percent head clown head desert ghost head hypo so a lot of times when you get a lot of heads or possible heads into some of these combos they can really drive up the price significantly so as a matter of fact this one is 1150 dollars Pretty awesome price for a pretty awesome snake. So here is the lesser ball python. The lesser is actually in the blue-eyed leucista complex. So if you take two lessers and breed them together, 
25% of the time you get an all white snake with bright blue eyes, pretty awesome. And here's what happens if you mix the lesser into the leopard spot nose. <laughs> Take a look at this snake, it's really crazy. And a lot of times if you mix leopard and lesser together, the leopard lesser a lot of times will give you a striped snake on probably, I'd say maybe 80% of the time. It doesn't always give you a striped snake, but I'd say in a lot of cases when you mix those two genes together, a lot of times you'll get stripes on the top. Sometimes you get multiple stripes with the leopard lesser combination. And then you add in the spot nose and you get a scrambled up pattern with a really high definition. This is really awesome. I haven't really looked at a lot of these prices, so this is, you know, this is pretty amazing. This one's selling for $550. So here is the fire. The fire is a, kind of an interesting gene. It's actually in the black eye leucistic complex. You breed two fires together and you get an all white snake with black eyes. And it's allelic with a lot of genes like vanilla or disco. You get the vanilla screams and the vanilla creams with the fire. It's a pretty awesome gene. Here's what happens if you mix fire in with the leopard spot nose. Take a look at this. It's like, it seems like every one I show you, it just kind of blows me away. Every Every single time it is a really impressive combination you see it has really jumbled up pattern and really high contrast and it's a lot of really crazy head stamps on a lot of these combinations all right, so here is the clown ball python. The clown is actually a recessive mutation. So similar to the albino, you actually need two copies of the clown for a visual. And you know what happens when you mix the leopard, the spot nose, and the clown together? This is what you get. You get a Batman. Take a look at this. This is one of the most impressive combinations that you can find with the leopard and the spot nose. As a matter of fact, a lot of people breeding leopard and spot nose, that's what they're going for is the Batman. And I think that's why a lot of prices are really high because the price of the Batman is really high. This is a really in-demand combination. As a matter of fact, if you look at the genes on this one, this also has four genes, two copies of the clown and a leopard and a spot nose. And take a look at the price on this one. This one actually is $3,000 sold for $3,000. This is probably one of the most in-demand combinations in pretty much all of ball pythons, I would dare say. So here's another combination. I just kind of wanted to throw this at the end. It's a multi-gene combination. This is actually the firefly yellow belly. So we're going to have the two genes in with this. And it's starting with the firefly yellow belly, you take a look at this, you're like, man, that is a really impressive combination just by itself with the fire, the pastel, and the yellow belly. Three genes that come together to form some really super bright combinations. And here's what happens if you mix in the leopard and the spot nose in the combination and take a look at this this is really crazy how it just really shatters the pattern gives a really interesting head pattern on this and really keeps the really high definition pretty awesome combination i was just kind of curious on the price on this one this one's two thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars some of these are really high-end combinations you let me tell you you can't go wrong if you're breeding the leopard and the spot nose into other combinations all right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Ilya Sobolev asks, what is the best time of year to buy a snake? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, you can buy a snake any time of the year. It doesn't really matter, especially if you're buying it just as a pet. And what I would recommend is if you're actually going over on Morph Market or something like that, and you see a snake for sale that you're interested in, probably the best time to buy it is as soon as you see it, because a lot of times the snakes can move really fast, especially at reptile shows. I've had a lot of people walk up to my table and they're like, I really want to buy that snake, but I want to look around for and I almost guarantee you, if you do a couple laps around the show and come back to the table, almost all the time that snake is sold by the time you come back. It's usually one of the ones that are really in high demand that a lot of people are looking at. And I would say if you kind of have, you know, more time on your hands, say you want to buy a snake within the next 12 months, probably the best time to buy a snake would be in the fall. A lot of breeders, they kind of plan their breeding, so they have a lot of hatchlings in the fall. If you go to the reptile shows in the fall, or look over on Morph Market in the fall, a lot of times you probably have the best selection as far as all the different kinds of snakes that you can actually choose from. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.